welcome back to California Cooking. This weekend, we are kicking off grilling season. Chef Hunter Pritchett is teaching me how to make the perfect sauces for your grilled meats and veggies. Then, it's a summer favorite. I'm making a spicy buttermilk fried chicken. And Dana Devon is taking us to a smokehouse making low and slow Mississippi barbecue. First up, I'm getting in the kitchen with Chef Hunter Pritchett at his greenhouse-inspired eatery called Atrium. Chef Hunter knows his way around the grill, but he's all about the sauces and dips. Take a look. We are here in the most beautiful restaurant, Atrium. This is Chef Hunter Pritchett. Hi, Chef. Hey, how are Good you? Good to see you. This Same. place, I walked in. And my mouth was open because I just think it is stunning. It's on Vermont in Los Feliz and you're walking by and there's cute little bookshops and a flower shop and a little door that you would easily walk past. Mm -hmm. You're not calling attention to like, come in here, come We're in not. here. You didn't need it because people know it's here. No, it's, it's a little secret. We never intended to be like a speakeasy or a secret restaurant or anything. It's just a very long patio from the street and you catch a glimpse of our sign and there's trees and people and flowers and walk back. It's very like golden and, and brassy with the palms and all warm. those trees. It is, it's like very warm. Very California, you get that vibe. Exactly. So your idea for your menu, it's a stamp on your passport when you come here. You get to go a lot of different places based totally. on your menu. Yeah, based on the neighborhoods. I always say like, think of how you got here and what you passed and yeah. all the different sort of cuisines and and people that sh the neighborhoods you drove through. We have, you know, Thai Town, just a shot over, yeah. East Hollywood. Um, Silver Lake, Koreatown's not super far. And it all influenced your menu. Yeah, and that's the LA cuisine, which I feel like is a very good cultural mix. It's, it's a good neighborhood restaurant for people to just come and hang out, have a good time, and truly come back to. The, the food is very strong flavored. Mm -hmm. I like to think that I get them addicted to these strong yeah. flavors, whether it be, you know, high acid or a little bit of spice and mm -hmm. sort of keep that little bit in the brain that keeps them coming back. Right, because that's it when you own a restaurant. Come once, that's great, but it'd be great if you, you know, have regulars. Right. So we have a little uh, bit of a secret sauce in there for dipping. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a lot of lime juice in it. Dipping? And then do some, some dipping, uh, it's excellent. You came on the morning news and everything, every dish you had, had a fabulous sauce with it. Here's the thing about cooking at home. You can make a boring chicken breast or fish, but if you've got a little sauce to jazz things up, yeah. You got a you got a good meal on your hands. Sauce is awesome. It's, yeah. Especially if you're dipping, because it's fun. People like to move around. People like to dip. It enhances everything. Like sauce so easy. Sauce scares people. Like, oh my gosh, how do I make a sauce? But I, I always say just like practice. Yeah. Screw around. Sauce is not expensive. You can start with ketchup and mustard or mayonnaise Mayo, and mustard. Sour cream. A lot of lemon juice will go a long mm -hmm. way. We use a lot of lemon juice and lime juice here. Yeah. Um, it's very sour, super fresh lemons yeah. and they're kind of a punch in the face, but that's what it's all about, you know? <laughs> or like, buy some vinegar, play around with yes. the vinegar, get some chili paste, get some sriracha, get some sambal, something mm -hmm. like that, but. Play around. You can't really screw it up. I mean, if you go too salty, sure, but really I think recognize like what you're doing with it. Yeah. And then just make it how you like it. Let's go make some sauce. Let's get saucy. We're doing it. <laughs> We are in your kitchen, which, just like your restaurant, is beautiful. Yeah. Windows, you can look at the whole dining room. We're always exposed, it's great. We are making, I see a bunch of green onions. Green stallions. onions, so we have dip number one. This dip is our French one. onion dip. Super easy to make at home. Okay. Um, these are spring onions, yeah. but any store-bought scallions, totally just fine. Okay. But we're just gonna grill them up until they're really caramelized mm -hmm. and almost black. So okay. there's salt, pepper, and then some good olive oil on there. Through the magic of television, I have some stuff that we already blended up. Okay. With the onions, you blend them up with the lemon juice and Worcestershire sauce. So this is the end color you're looking for, wow. nice and charred good charcoal flavor to it. That's not green at all. Not it green at all. It completely changed color. One would say it's French onion colored. Uh -huh. um, so that goes in there with a small amount of mayonnaise. So it's one cup of this to three cups of sour cream. Okay. So this is some lemon juice, some garlic powder. Okay. And a little bit of salt. The hardest part is charring up your green onion. And that's totally fine. So you want to get it nice and smooth, get all the lumps out, and this will go right in the fridge. So these are little fingerlings. We don't have a French fry, but I always say like your restaurant has to have a French fry 
which is something that's cheap, easy, and everybody can yeah. get. You yeah. Know, so strong. That barbecue seasoning smells it's like really that's going to be good. It has a lot of ingredients, but it's it's well worth it. On the fried potatoes. Hot potatoes, cold dip. Come mm. on. Mm. It's tasting time. Creamy and oniony. That is really good. That's what it's all about. It's like full flavor, you know, it's it's a little spicy, salty, fatty. It's a great start to your meal. It's like the best barbecue potato chip. And barbecue potato chips are pretty good. Like you can't go wrong with them. Holy moly. But these are better. So we're gonna make salsa verde. This is Ooh. a herb salsa verde, so mm -hmm. it's like a Provencal, sort of like a Spanish, Italian one. So this would have a lot of green herbs. Totally, it's great for anything grilled. Yeah. I love this one, it's got good acid, it's nice and bright. It's mint, tarragon, and parsley and chive. So it's pretty simple, um, shallots. So these are cut very small. So we wanna really soak these in lemons. So it's about a big tablespoon of shallot minced. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna get nice and pink and that's gonna take all the, the gas and like acid out of them. Yeah. Capers again, this is a nice little uh, party trick. Mm -hmm. You can also use like gherkins or a good quality dill pickle. Mm -hmm. Makes it very interesting as well. And allow it to sit and just chill. These are chives. You can also use scallions, but cut them very small. Yeah. So two parts parsley, one mint, one chive. And then this is tarragon. Mm. Tarragon has like a nice fennel, yeah. anise flavor, but it's also somehow sweet and really like levels it out. And makes it very, uh, very French. So this is our mix and we'll just toss this around and make sure it's even. Man. Is that a jug of olive oil? It's a giant Boy. jug of olive oil. The trick is to cover it in olive oil and that will stop it from going brown. Good so by tip. the time we are done here, just stir it up. Our uh, shallots are done. You see how much more yeah. purple these are now. Just get that in there and that's it. It's nice and chunky, nice yeah, and light. There's enough oil herby. and lemon juice that'll flow. So there's our steak. And then I just like to get rustic with it. I'm not a big rustic guy, but this is sort of like a sauce in a dish. And ours on the menu really isn't much more than this. We have a chimichurri, which is super simple. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of a little. Easy and gorgeous. Easy peasy. Chef Hunter, I had so much fun with you in the kitchen. Same, it's my pleasure. And this steak. You, you got your reward. I know, That's and you know what I about. had to bring with me? The potatoes. Oh yeah, of course. Well-rounded meal. Those couldn't be left in the kitchen. No. No. We serve our steak with potatoes too. All of your food, so delicious. This restaurant, one of the most beautiful I've been to. Thank and you. you, so much fun. Thanks. See you Same. again? Yeah. Should, should I be back tomorrow for lunch? Come or? anytime, <laughs> I'm literally always here. I live upstairs. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. There's no way. There's no way. It's just the roof. But I'm always here. Thank you again. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Oh my gosh, the onion dip is so good and the green sauce is going to go great with any grilled meat. Plus, Hunter makes for us a brown butter aioli, which is perfect for your grilled veggies. If you want that recipe, go to KTLA.com. Coming up, Dana Devon is taking us to a southern barbecue spot that's known for low and slow chicken brisket and ribs. Then I'm making the perfect grilling side, sauteed summer corn with feta, but believe I like it. But first, it's a summer staple, fried chicken. I'm making for you a spicy buttermilk fried chicken. That's coming up. I love fried chicken. It's such a great addition to any barbecue or picnic table in the summer. So I decided to make a buttermilk fried chicken, but this one's got a kick. Take a look. Okay, I'm no Colonel Sanders, but I love fried chicken and I thought, you know, every cook should know how to make fried chicken, right? It looks daunting and I'm a little scared of raw chicken sometimes to know whether it's cooked and I tend to overcook it. So I'm going to attempt to make some buttermilk fried chicken, but not just your regular old buttermilk. I'm gonna do spicy buttermilk fried chicken. And I learned a trick because I was looking for buttermilk at the store the other day and they were out. So I thought, what could I do if I don't have any buttermilk? And I looked online and you can take regular milk and turn it into buttermilk. So I'm gonna put about three cups 
or so. Enough to dunk your chicken, give it a good old bath in buttermilk. And then to each cup of whole milk, you don't want to go skim milk on this, you do a tablespoon of lemon juice or white vinegar. So I've got some white vinegar. You do three tablespoons. And then from what I've read, you let the milk and the vinegar sit here on the countertop for about 10, 15 minutes. So I'm gonna try that. I said, hey, let's see how that goes. To our buttermilk, let's add our seasoning. There's a lot of flavor in fried chicken and that's because of the marinade. And to our milk, I'm gonna add some garlic powder. And I'm just gonna do a fat tablespoon of garlic powder. Some onion powder, same thing. Fat tablespoon. Some oregano. Fat tablespoon. That's gonna be my theme for this, fat tablespoon. Some smoked paprika, one of my favorite spices. Yes, you guessed it, fat tablespoon. And honestly, this kind of thing, you don't need to measure. It, you can't screw it up. Cracked black pepper, fat pinch of salt, and to make it spicy, I'm gonna add some tapatio hot sauce. And a lot, maybe half this bottle. Tapatio, I think, is gonna be such a good kick to my marinade. I love this on tacos and anything, soups, anything spicy. I put a little bit of hot sauce on it, but I really think it's gonna work perfectly in my marinade. All right, so I've got my chicken pieces. Whatever, make sure the skin is on. That's the thing about fried chicken. In order to get that crispy skin, you need to have skin on it. So I'm gonna do some legs and some thighs and some breasts. And this is where they take their bath. And they're gonna take their bath for a good 24 hours. The magic of television, that's gonna go in there. And I'm going to get my chicken that I started marinating last night. So let me grab that. I've got my marinated chicken that I started marinating last night. Oh, I know what I forgot to tell you guys to put in the marinade, because I see it peeking out. Thyme. See, I put a whole bunch of thyme leaves into my marinade to our second step of making good fried chicken. The dredge. I've got just your all-purpose white flour, and then I'm gonna season the white flour just like I seasoned my marinade, because you want the flour to have flavor too. That's the first thing that people are gonna taste when they bite into your chicken. So I'm gonna do a healthy dose of onion powder. A lot of garlic powder. A little bit of oregano. Again, our smoked paprika. Some salt goes into our flour. Some of our cracked pepper. Mix up our seasoning. Let's take our first piece. Shake the excess and I'm gonna put it on my tray, ready for frying. Time to fry some chicken. I got my oil heating up in the pan and I decided to use cast iron because when you see people fry chicken, especially in the South, it's always in a cast iron skillet. So I'm gonna use my cast iron. I have some safflower oil heating up. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna put the other chicken in just yet because it cools the oil down so much. When you put one piece of chicken in, I'm gonna let the heat come back up before I add another one. You also don't wanna fill this too high with oil because once you put the chicken in, the oil rises and you don't wanna overflow. So I did about halfway. The oil should be at about 350. I don't have a thermometer in here, but that's what the oil temp should be. Now this is gonna go for a while. I would say at least 15 minutes for the chicken legs. 20 or more for the chicken breast. And don't crowd your pan. Four is all I'm gonna do. So we're just gonna let it go. Okay, my fried chicken is out of the oil. It looks good for a first try. A little dark, but crispy. Hear that? I'm gonna plate it up and let it drain on a rack so some of the oil drains off. Ooh, it smells so good, I can't wait to bite in. And how I would serve this, I like a little, Maybe squeeze a lemon, so just maybe cut some lemon wedges, put those on the plate so people can have some options. And then I think a little bit of thyme, since that's how we seasoned our chicken. 
and voila! We have our spicy hot sauce buttermilk fried chicken. The moment has arrived. I'm gonna taste my fried chicken. The one thing I wanna do too, when you take anything out of oil after you fry it, hit it with a little bit of coarse salt. I have some kosher salt. Ooh, ooh, this piece. Is it spicy? Is it hot? You know what, you guys? It's good. You taste all the seasonings and you totally taste the tapatio hot sauce. Just in the background, it's not spicy. But you just taste that little vinegary kick. You guys, make fried chicken, don't be scared. I have to say, that fried chicken was really good for my first try. And that addition of the tapatio hot sauce really made it. And if you want to have a special sauce to go with your fried chicken, I make a spicy honey mustard. If you want the recipe, go to ktla.com. Coming up, Dana Devon is taking us to a southern barbecue spot that's known for low and slow chicken brisket and ribs. Then I'm making the perfect grilling side, sauteed summer corn with feta, but we'll leave I like it. That's coming up. Devin is from Texas, lived in Nashville, so she knows a thing or two about barbecue. And I've heard so much about this place called Boogie McGee's. So Dana went there to check it out. Here's what she found. Hi, Jessica. I heard you guys are looking for some good barbecue in LA. And rumor has it that Boogie McGee's Bayou Smokehouse Barbecue is the bomb. I am so excited to try this. Come on. Our basic for actually starting this was we went to a lot of barbecues in LA and we always left hungry and we always left disappointed. There was probably something a need for a good barbecue to bring our barbecue here and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted a, a place where you could come, watch a good game, bring your kids, enjoy yourself without the hustle and bustle of other people bothering you inside that bar. There's so many options here in Koreatown for Korean barbecue, and we thought, my gosh, how about just providing them another option, American Southern barbecue? Right. And just, you know, and we thought it'd be fun just to offer that because it's very rare here in this part of town. Tell me what we've got going on here. So we, this is our beef selection. So these are gonna be our half rack of our beef short rib. Okay and this is gonna be our brisket. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start seasoning some of these okay. guys. Gonna right. use our beef seasoning. Okay. And okay. most guys do liberal, but we don't do that. Right. We go full on, head on. Why do you like the dry rub? The dry rub for us is gonna put all the flavor back in the meat. It's almost like okay. when you sear a piece of meat, you're gonna lock in all the flavors on the inside. Now, it's, believe it or not, it's gonna come out wet when we finish. Really, okay. Where are you from? We're a Mississippi barbecue. So when you get a golden triangle, when they talk about Kansas mm -hmm. City, and Texas, right. and then you know you throw in the South Carolina guys. We got a little bit of Memphis, we got a little bit of Louisiana, and we got a lot of backwoods from right. Mississippi. So did you learn to barbecue back there? We did. I went outside on the barbecue grill when I was about 13 years old and burnt up everything I could find. Just trying it? Just trying it, trying it. I did every method possible. And believe it or not, I just learned from my mistakes really? as time went You're on. You're self-taught. Hey, you do a good job. Thank you. We I need to hire you on our <laughs> staff. You don't want to do that. I could drink the beer though. <laughs> I could drink the beer. Once we finish these, we're gonna take these okay. and we're gonna put these on our racks. And so when we're putting them in like this, they're gonna get the sides, they're gonna get underneath, Got it. they're gonna get the top. And then as the cooking process flows, you will see everything that's on the inside of this meat will ooze out nice and flow and you're gonna get the best taste of Amazing. meat you've ever tried okay. in your life. I'm so excited. I'm dying right now. Can you tell me what we have here? So this is Kirk's specialty. This is the brisket, so fatty. Okay. We got the baby back ribs, okay. and then we have the beef short rib. Okay, let's, can we dig in? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So our bones basically Ooh, are just gonna come, come out. Yeah. Oh my Everything's God. Everything's really tender here. And okay. I just wanna cut something right here. I just, it's, it's like butter. Okay, let me try that. It's melting in I your notice. mouth. Notice the flavor profile from the short rib. To the brisket. To the, to the brisket. You don't even need a knife, you guys. I'm cutting this with my fork. <laughs> a plastic fork. Oh my God. 
<laughs> yeah. And watch these baby backs. They just pull off the bone. They just pull. So just bite into that like okay. a caveman and you can go at it. <laughs> this is what we do in Texas, right? It's literally bringing back memories. And then you've got potato salad. Aunt Eunice's potato salad. Aunt I told Eunice. you. Let the vegetables do the work. So we don't put a lot of seasoning. We just got some potatoes, some vegetables, and just let it all blend together and it'll come together like senior prom. You got it. <laughs> and coleslaw, which I love the big chunks of. Mardi Gras slaw. Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras slaw. You got and all your color. Beans, okay. Baked beans, it's got bacon in it. This is the crowd pleaser. And there is a lot of Jack Daniels in it. Oh, I love Jack Daniels in your pecan pie. Mm. <laughs> Excited. That is insanely good. And they go, quickly. It's so good, it's like a two thumbs up, you guys. But instead of two thumbs up, it's like a, it's like a two, two ribs up. Oh, Dana, it's all about the low and slow. It looks so good in Aunt Eunice's potato salad. Can't wait to try it. On to Levi Likes It. You know it's that time of year you get invited to a barbecue or maybe a picnic and you want to bring a yummy side. I'm making for Levi a sautéed summer corn with feta, but will he like it? Hello. Hello. Isn't it hard to eat dinner with handcuffs? And like this one. Officer Solomon. Hi. Hey, is it the uh, policeman's dinner break? Yeah. What are you going to eat? Yes, it's corn, tomatoes, edamame, basil, feta cheese. Try it. Yeah. How does it taste? Yummy. It tastes yummy? Mm -hmm. Yay, he loves it. Butter and corn. What could be wrong with that? If you want to get the recipe, go to ktla.com. That's it for us. For more of my conversation with Chef Hunter Pritchett and his restaurant, Atrium, go to our California Cooking Podcast. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. I'm going to use my cast iron. I have some safla... Saf... <laughs> it's so funny because you know there's a lot of Jack Daniels that goes right. down around here because that's their... their we had to flower. find some way to recycle the bottle. Hello. Hello. Hello, Lala. Baby, Lala.